tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello, what you see here is lots of photographs, 128 to be precise. I was just uh, putting my old telephone, it's a telephone from the 1950s and I'm the proud owner of it, it actually does still work. Uh, I put it on a, a rotational stool and I rotated it and had the camera always at the same angle until one rotation was complete and now I ch chose another angle for the camera and rotated the phone again. You see in the background is uh, part of the furniture in my room and this is the next uh, sequence here and uh, all in all it's 128 photos. Now from all these perspectives here you can create a proper 3D model and there are a few tools out there on the on the web which enable you to do that and once you have that 3D model of the phone you can import it into Maya and even get the textures and I'll show you the way how to do it in one in this case here. So um, I use a, an app by Autodesk called Recap Photo I'm not associated in any way with Autodesk, but I like their software Maya, as you know. And uh, I didn't know anything about Recap, but um, it, it seems to be an interesting program, which is a little bit under-evaluated. I think very, rare, uh, very few people know about it. And uh, this is the visual visualization of uh, the telephone. I fed all 128 photos into that app, then it took a while until it uh, created that 3D model in the cloud. You don't create it uh, in on locally on your computer, you use a cloud service for that. And the navigation is a little bit odd too. You have to rotate using this um, I can hear so you can rotate the phone you can see that the resolution is quite amazing and that there are lots of artifacts which we need to get rid of in order to use this properly in uh, 3d computer animation in Maya for example but um, uh, I just show you how to export it and what to do with it in Maya then in the recap you find several things here you can even edit the mesh which I didn't do because Maya is much superior to uh, for editing meshs. You have um, this export function here and you can export the image which is basically a screenshot well, which is quite cool actually. You can export a video which is a visualization of this view here what we've just seen and here is export model and you can use the quick export actually and uh, on, in quick export you can optimize it for FX, uh, Maya FBX and uh, you can use a low, medium or high quality and you just click on export. When I import something into Maya, either using the import or open dialog, or the drag and drop process uh, like now, I always first of all have a look at the outliner. Lots of things are landing in the scene and uh, let's have a look uh, where for example the image 2574 is by pressing F and you see that there it's a camera and uh, there's other cameras here which one is this one, this is that one here and uh, for example all these cameras here and uh, Recap actually calculated the, my camera angles and since the whole scene is so large uh, we have the what is called the clipping planes and I, I don't want to deal with them uh, I rather put everything and this down here the main mesh node is our phone 
I put them in a group, control G, and it just scale this whole group down. Now we see the grid here and the phone on the grid. And now when I press F, I see everything uh, lined up again. What you see is that the phone lands in a peculiar uh, position. It, uh, it needs to be rotated. And in order to find out how it needs to be rotated, just have a look here at the axis. It's the red one. We need to rotate it like this by 90 degrees. And this is the red one. And the red one is X. So we type in 90 degrees here and everything is fine. Let us delete the cameras because they're in our way. And here we have the phone. When we render it in Arnold now, we need a light, of course, for example, a Skydome light. And we don't want it to see in the scene, not in our modeling scene. So we deactivate the lights here so we don't inadvertently pick it. And now we can render this object. And we get quite an odd view. And uh, the reason for that is when we have a look at the shader, right mouse click and material attributes, we see that we have a material called material zero. And that's based on a Fong shader, which is a Maya shader, which is not being handled uh, properly by Arnold, by the default render in Maya. So what we need to do is uh, we need to exchange this with a an AI standard surface shader, which is a standard Arnold shader. If we just use the flip menu here, we find the Arnold shader up here somewhere, standard surface shader. I don't want to do that uh, for a specific reason. Uh, the reason is that uh, I want to keep this here. The color is mapped with a file which is in your temp folder. I don't know where it is on the, on the Mac, but on Windows, Recap just places it in the temp folder. So this is a diffuse map, and I actually want to show you this complicated map, which was automatically created. So this is the texture map. This is the UV map, and you will see that it looks very complicated, but it will map all right. And uh, here you have the zoom for um, slider and you can see how detailed the whole thing is. And that means that uh, we can actually see all the details here in the rendering. Now, how do we get this texture on that phone? It actually is on the phone already, but with a material which is called material zero, which we cannot really use here. The most elegant way, I think, to approach this problem, which isn't a problem really, is to use the hyper shader. It's this icon here, or you can find it under Windows. Rendering editors, because it has to do with a view, and you go to Hypershade. Here you see a sort of representation of our texture here. Of course, when you map it on such an abstract object here rather than on the telephone, it looks a little bit odd. But uh, what we'll do now is we just middle mouse drag the material zero into that view here. Uh, and we want to see the inputs. That's why we click here. So we see the inputs. Let me reorganize this uh, to see it more clearly here. What we have here is we have a diffuse map. It's called a diffuse map, which goes via the out color channel into the color channel of the material zero. It's that material here. It's the diffuse map, which I've just shown you showed you and the bump map uh, is not necessary for us because um, we will we're just interested in the geometry uh, and the bump map goes into the normal camera that's a standard process for mapping things now we want to use this part here the diffuse map for a new Arnold material and in order to create an Arnold material the easiest way is to hover the mouse here and then type tab and it opens this little rectangle and you type in AI standard which is um, the standard surface shader and here it arrives uh, it's white by default and now all we need to do is locate the 
color here, the base color. It's called base color. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see it better. And we want the out color of our diffuse map. This is our telephone map to go into the base color here. And you see with this plus sign, you see that it's um, it's not a single value. It's actually red, green, and blue. Uh, and it's the same here. The base color wants three channels. So this is perfectly all right. We just we won't destroy this here uh, by just clicking here again and creating this connection to the base color. So I'll let loose of the mouse now, and it's connected. Now I minimize the hypershader, and our phone currently has the material number zero with a phone shader, but with the right mouse click I can now use an existing material, namely the AI standard surface shader, which I just created. And now I can use this icon in order to see a proper mapping. And here is the phone as we've seen it before in the recap view. When we render it, we get a very nice, maybe a little bit too glossy version of this phone. And you see that we, uh, this is actually the low resolution rendering. The crucial thing is always the map. So this is quite good, I think, for just photographs. Even the hole, the dents here are quite all right, not exactly round. But you can fix that because it's in the geometry now. So it's a pretty low poly geometry. And of course you need to throw away these things and maybe the, the stool uh, top as well. Whatever you like to do. Now let me point you to my blog which is not commercial, so I don't earn a cent from that. And uh, right here you have uh, one of my experiments I did recently. So this is a, an electronic device w where you can record eight tracks of audio. It has an amazing microphone, by the way. I paid for it, obviously. It's called Spy Studio. It's made by Isotope. And I just did um, a couple of photos with my smartphone and uh, the whole object looks like this when it arrives in recap. And here it's a little bit closer. So that's a visualization in recap and not in Maya yet. So uh, these are images here of the imported um, geometry. Here you have an X-ray kind of view, which is quite nice. Looks like this, pretty dark, but uh, that's the way X-rays look like. And uh, here I made some abstract art from a misguided recap interpretation. Of a big studio here. Everything is wrong basically here and m many things are missing. The dashboard, the mixing board and the monitors, nothing is properly done here. Uh, and here you see the studio in a dark background. This is a 3D model actually, very close to the mixing board. Here is the, the, the clock and the monitors and uh, it's National Public Radio in Germany where I usually work and um, these are just other angles and uh, since the whole image didn't suit my purpose really I went to this version here and this led me to renderings like these. This is just a Photoshop layer with a couple of dots and uh, rendered in Maya of course. And even further down I uh, used my Brompton folding bike. Here you see a series of photos, 130. This website is basically my own diary, so I just rem remember things. And this is the bike in the living room where I placed it. And uh, amazingly, the surroundings came with it, although I had the cameras pretty close to that bike. 
here you see the model in grey with all the camera angles camera angles all by hand I was just walking around the 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 bike and shooting 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 a little bit closer You see this is very rough but you can see what kind of bike it is if you're familiar with folding bikes uh, this is I mean it's a typical Brompton bike you have all the nice shading here the spokes are missing here but that doesn't matter because x-ray view here uh, polygon view an additional light this is a th 3d scene in Maya now where I've just put an area light down here and here is a rendering and you see the missing spikes here obviously when you render the whole thing from the top it looks like an authentic uh, folded uh, bike but uh, it sure isn't it's a, it's just a model and here you see the missing parts and uh, this part of geometry doesn't have that detail really it's the map it's the texture map and in order to demonstrate this I rendered the bikes in three resolutions here high medium and low in Maya and you see that they basically look the same more or less you see there's always a problem here at the top of the saddle but um, you see the logo here even here very low resolution I think this has 1.5 million and uh, this one has 9,000 so a really big difference here and uh, here you see the the wireframe mode here it's so dense that you can't look through you can partly look through and you can totally look through here and uh, when I render this with a just a standard shader here in a blue light tone I see the difference between the three resolutions here this is I mean the high resolution with uh, a million or so uh, polygons is already quite bad it's not very detailed and rich in resolution here this is a, a little bit less and this is really clunky here but uh, once you apply the texture it's uh, it's all fine and uh, when you have the model in Maya you can use displacement mapping <laughs> that's why I created this kind of I just uh, used the displacement map uh, in order to get it a little bit thicker and uh, more childish and having said this I wish you a very nice day Use the combination of photographs, 3D extraction and, of course, Maya. Bye-bye.